Hey, it's John Mayetta from the Tech Today podcast in the past. You may have heard me talk about or have seen us write about the Fed's overnight reverse repo facility. And what that is, it's a facility created by the Fed designed to give counterparties who have excess liquidity an opportunity to invest that capital. So it involves the Fed selling securities to those counterparties with the promise by which the Fed will uh, repurchase those securities at a later date. These counterparties may be banks, they may be non-bank institutions. It's typically a short-term facility. And so I use the overnight reverse repo facility as a proxy for excess capital in the system. And if you, here's sort of the graph below. This is the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of New York publishes this data each day. So if you look out, you know, this facility spiked during COVID is when the, the, the Fed rolled it out to help support the credit markets. If you go back a year, we sort of peaked in in April of 2023 around $2.4 trillion. And the facility, in terms of the, the, the level, has steadily declined since then. We're at about, I think we're at about 515. Let's zoom in for the three-month view. $513 billion outstanding as of the close of business on February 2nd. At this current pace, my guess is we'll see the overnight reverse repo facility bleed down to zero sometime in March, which is right around when the Fed is due to allow the bank term funding program, which is the Fed's bailout facility for banks, that's due to expire on March 11th. So that liquidity crutch is going away. And again, if we look at sort of the chart, it suggests that there is uh, less excess liquidity in the market today versus a year ago versus six months ago. You know, we were in excess of a trillion in November. We spike up here at year end. That's sort of a, each year at year end over the past several years, the, uh, the uh, outstanding balance spikes, but steady state, the number has, has pulled in. So I think there's less liquidity in the system. I believe the economy is softening, and I believe the Fed will ultimately reduce rates as the economy softens, as there's less liquidity or less excess liquidity in the system. Um, as the bank term funding program goes away, the bank's going to require a crutch. And if we have a credit event, you're not going to see the Fed move rates down in a measured manner. They'll, they'll take rates down quickly if we have a credit event. For all I know, we may see uh, Bank Term Funding Program 2.0 if it gets bad enough. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the second half of March as the Bank Term Funding Program goes away. You'll see the discount window pick up some of that slack, but that discount window is not as favorable in uh, from a, a term perspective, uh, in terms of the borrowing rate, in terms of the margin rate, the margin level, um, it's not as favorable as the BTFP was. So it's going to be fascinating to see what banks do uh, in the absence of the BTFP crutch, given the amount of unrealized losses on their balance sheets. It's going to cause them to be more conservative. And if we start to see bank failures, which I fully expect to see, particularly with some of the smaller banks, if on that news we start to see depositors withdraw capital from the banks at a time when the banks don't have as much liquidity on hand in the absence of the BTFP, those withdrawals could cause more failures. That would be your credit event. And how will the Fed react? It, it's going to be fascinating. And, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they take rates down to two, if they take rates down to zero in short order. If they take rates uh, down to two, will that be in conjunction with the QE program? If they take rates down to zero, will that be with or without a QE program? Will we see BTFP part two? And I'm hypothesizing here in the scenario that we have bank failures, withdrawals, and sort of a repeat of the first half of March of 2023, if that happens, 
then I think the, the Fed takes pretty abrupt action. In the absence of that, I think the Fed lowers rates moderately, probably close to what you see on the dot plot. But I just feel like this thing, the economy is going to kind of, it's going to slam into a wall at some point. We're going to have the credit event that we would have had in March of 2023 were it not for the Fed stepping in with its BTFP bailout. That credit risk did not go away. It's still out there. So how will the Fed behave in the event of some sort of credit event? And I'm afraid we'll be back to 0% rates or something close to it. Back to QE at a time when the fiscal side of the house is going to be spending enormous amounts of money in this election year trying to kickstart the economy. I, I, I'm probably 60-40 in that I expect the Biden administration to, uh, to, to, to try to drop some helicopter money on the economy again. Whether it be a trillion, two trillion, I'm not sure. But I think this inflation bubble is going to spool up again beginning in the summertime. That's a long way away, but it's also right around the corner. It's going to be a very interesting year. That's all.